Hi, everyone. Let's see. Do I have audio? I don't know no. how to see everyone's comments, but we'll get there. Cool. This is big. Just that um, I'm here because <laughs> we're taking. Don't mind the shoulder sneaking in here. For... My husband's helping me. We're, we're tag teaming what the Lord said was getting truth out there and into people where um, maybe they've not yet ventured into a church or they're in a church that's struggling to um, teach the full gospel. That's not in judgment. Well, it kind of is. Listen, the word is the word. Don't mess with it. It's powerful. Um, it will change your life if you let it. But if you don't let it, it won't. There are people that read the word who are taught the word. There are people with theological degrees and they still believe lying spirits about the word. That is what we want to avoid. That is why it is pertinent to this day and every day that you take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You cannot know that without not only reading his word, knowing his word, but trusting his word. Because his word is higher than our own thoughts, our own opinions, our own uh, even teachings that were being taught, if we don't take them back to the word, Paul built up, what church was it, Bay? where he's like, good job that you test the word. Like, he, no, they, the, they didn't even take Paul at his word. Paul, they, they would test a, the word. And they didn't get a letter back either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, didn't get, they didn't have to have another correction letter, right? Because they tested the word. They wanted to know that this was God. And the, the Bible actually says that. Test the word. So this is the mandate he's put on us is to stir up a hunger for people to know what the word really says and allow the Holy Spirit to lead them into truth. That is root uh, for high school and down. And that is root of revival for the entire ministry. So we're rooted in the word. We're ignited and taught by the Spirit of God. So this is powerful. So last night, um, we've done 21 days for, uh, it's called Reboot, Root Reboot, for, we've done four sessions and we've watched the Holy Spirit radically transform people the way his word promises he will. And we do 21 days. We have another one coming up online in October. If you're not somewhere where we'll be going and doing it in person. Um, but we started the first class in person last night. We have another location doing it tonight. And it was powerful. And we've not done it other than like snippets of it preaching. We've not done it in person in a class with the intention, the same intention we do when we go after the reboot online. So last night we got through the first session, which I'm going to share a little with you here and you know, any comments. And there was this individual who we found out later has been saved for, for 17 years, um, said, well, I feel condemnation by what you said, because I don't feel I can live up to that. And I said, well, good, because you can't, that's the whole point of this class. If you're going after the fruit without going after the root, you never will. And the Lord or the Lord, uh, can't get his truth to you because the enemy is too busy giving you what we call the devil, 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 devil whammy. He'll give you a thought about your past um, and uh, twisted truth uh, or um, something someone said about you. And then you'll me meditate on that for a moment. And then he'll go, aha, they didn't capture it. They didn't cast it out. So now I'm going to make them feel guilty for having it. So that's what we call the devil double whammy. And so a lot of people in the room, I guess, know this person. And so they're like, you know, and, and he was just going on and I feel bad. And da -da. I said, stop. Now, at this moment, I'm talking to that which is oppressing him. And I said, you no longer have authority over this man. And uh, he kind of looked at me like, uh, and I was like, you have to fight for the finished work of Christ if you believe it's true. And if you don't, then you, what are you putting action to your faith to? Because that was one of the things he said. And uh, he didn't know. And so what did he have? Marvelous opportunity to be offended. And I said, we can take care of that. We can deliver you from the press. But he didn't want to. He has, he has learned to take identity in not being enough, being depressed, um, 
not able to attain the things uh, he said things like oh, i look at your family and think i could never be that way and it's the same lie the enemy is not unique in any way i remember getting saved at 23 and looking like i can never live like these people so um pure and kind and you know because i was looking in my own power when i first got saved and then it was like if i tried to do anything outside of him i just or change anything i would go back to the habit but when I started turning my focus to him, when I started allowing him to live, when nothing else mattered, then the Holy Spirit burned out those things that didn't belong there and implanted and watered and grew those things that were already living there the minute we said, yeah, I said yes to Jesus. And so it was, it was a good conversation. I would have loved to just lay hands on him and see him free for a moment so he could see how he's being oppressed, but he did leave um, and we're praying he'll come back because the enemy has the same tactics and I'll reveal a little of that as we go into this. If you're joining me, I would love you to comment. I can't see your comments yet, so if anyone out there wants to help uh, with <laughs> with any of our um, digital streams and and assist us with your knowledge, I will, I, it's invaluable. So let us know, message us, PM us. But this must get out. And so right now, I ask that you literally take your brain and take it off. Uh, because your thoughts is are not what I'm speaking to right now. It's the real you, your spirit, the mind of Christ that is in you that will come out, bring the word alive in your heart, and your heart will teach your mind by the Holy Spirit. And that is how mind renewal happens. Sometimes we bypass the spirit and the heart and everything that Christ has already put in us and go straight here and try to mentally assent and mentally grasp. It's when we lay down our own thinking and tap into the new creation in in us everything that he's put in us according to second peter one we'll get there also and allow that to teach our mind right our focus is the root of which has been placed in us the new creation that we've been made not i can do this myself receive it process it and then live it out no there will be time to choose there will be time to take thoughts captive but right now it's your spirit that is receiving the word that is taking it as truth that is cleansing out the other parts and then bringing to your mind that clarity and that renewal where it's like Oh, I no longer live, but it's him that lives in me, right? And you're like, that sounds impossible, Kate. Oh, wouldn't the enemy love to win by making us believe that living this new creation life is too difficult? Do you know one version of the word where it says you've become a new creation? It says a whole new species altogether. In one of our reboot classes, we go over this. Uh, it's why you can claim a new bloodline. That's why you are separated now. That's why Jesus could say, who are my mother? Who is my brothers? Who are, flip that. Um, because he was of a heavenly bloodline and he died, suffered and died so we could be too. And the father knew that that was important enough that we would be a new creation a, a, you know, we can't even be classified in the Latin scientific class, you know, homeo or any of that, because now it, we're something the world has never seen before. The minute we become that new creation, we're something the world has never seen before. And now the only way we can walk it out is to be rooted in Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, the real us, into all truth, which will renew our minds. It's a new way of living. It doesn't go through here first. It goes through here first. Even though we're using these parts that he's created to go after his word. I use my fingers to open the Bible. I use my legs to walk over and my hands to grab the Bible. I use my eyes that he's given me to read the Bible. But those are all part of my body. My body is not what is reading the Bible. It is the new recreated me. That's why there were so many people who still had a veil, the Bible says, that they could read the Old Testament 
Even today, they can read the Old Testament and not see Jesus in it because there's a veil. They are not the new creation. They don't have the Holy Spirit to lead them into all truth. So where are we learning from? We're learning from here. And that's coming up and renewing our minds. Even though I'm using my mind and my eyes to register and get it into my spirit. All of these parts that he's given me were body, soul, and spirit. To take in the word, it is his spirit that is confirming with the spirit of God in me and my spirit that is being able to be led into all truth, to push out what doesn't belong there. And in that, my mind connects with my spirit and renewal happens. So many churches today have bypassed the recreated spirit, the new you, to get to just straight to mind renewal. Mind renewal cannot happen without the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. It cannot It is a mental ascension. I am reading with my brain and I am reasoning with my brain. And when I do that, I am using the old nature to reason God's powerful word into my life. And that way it will work according to how I see it fit that it work. That is not God's plan. You see this in in Matthew with the loaves and the fishes and so many other places, but this is where the Lord took me. He said, okay, when, when the disciples noticed everyone was hungry and they came to Jesus with two different earthly solutions. So a good leader would say, oh, you brought me solutions. That's what I wanted, right? These were ideas, not just there's a problem. These people are hungry. They came with two solutions. One was send them away that they may go eat. He says, they're too, Jesus says, they're too tired. That won't work. Um, and it's too late. And then uh, they say, okay, well, what do you, what do you expect then? Do you expect us to run into town and use all of our money to get food for them? And both of which Jesus is like, what? So here he's afforded, extended to them, afforded to them the Holy Spirit. They they walk about healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, just as Jesus did, because he um, transferred his authority and anointing to them until he would be lifted high and the Holy Spirit would come. And they still came and reasoned. So here's kindness, here's love, right? They wanted these people not to faint, not to grow weary. They needed to eat. So you, everyone in the natural church would say, isn't that so loving? They want to feed them. But what was missing was their new creation thinking. Now, they had not received the fullness yet, right? But they had seen what was available to them through Christ over and over and over again. And yet they still accessed Jesus by na- and the problems that they witnessed by natural means alone. So though they processed the need to help, they went by the fleshly manner or the earthly manner or what they would known that eliminates all of heaven and the promises that are so great we cannot contain them, the word says. They bypass those and say, we've got great natural solutions. And what was Jesus's response? Uh, no. What do we have? Break them into groups. Bring it here. And he blessed it. He thanked the Lord and it multiplied and the need was met, not naturally alone, but supernaturally first and then naturally. We for too long have gone after the naturally, the peace, the provision, the healing without going after the supernatural recreated new being DNA bloodline that we are a part of that sets us free, that opens up heaven, that releases heaven on earth, that is so far outside of the natural earthly doings that unless we go after the word by the spirit and trust him at it and release it in faith, we will live like the rest of the world and stamp the name Jesus on it or be happy with the occasional deliverance or the occasional healing because we have reasoned in our mind. We understand how this one is going to work. So I'm going to process it. I see this person needs help. I'm going to process the word and lay my hands and do what I know to do. And then all of a sudden that person has enough faith to receive it. But then the next person, it doesn't happen. Why? Because we're still processing the word through this rather than relinquishing 
everything to the leading of the spirit and then allowing our body, our thoughts, our words to line up with him alone. And it's so humbling because it's like, goodbye, you. No identity apart from him. The only thing that would be unique and special about me are the giftings that he placed inside of me. Don't call me good. Don't call me super. Don't follow me unless you're following me as I follow Christ. Because I in and of myself am nothing and can do nothing but in him. In him. And in that, there's no age limit. There's no sex. There's no uh, bloodline apart from his. There's no skin color. He says, in him, we can do all things. That's our new identity. And in a world where it's like, oh, you're so special and you're called to do this and look at you and it's seeped into the church. No. Humility is a no. It is Christ and Christ alone. In you, in me, in him, in her, although we can celebrate Christ in each other, we don't celebrate the flesh apart from the, from God alone. That's where we set un, un supernatural expectations. Things like telling uh, families, kids, parents, you're called to do great things, but leaving it here. What does the Bible say is great things? Take it further. Otherwise, they stop here and they imagine great things through the filter of the world, through the filter of their mind, not the filter of the word and the leading of the spirit. In this upside down kingdom, if we're not clear on where you go to find your identity and it is there alone that you live and breathe and have your being, then we are leaving the the sheep for the slaughter. They say, I believe, but I'm experiencing. I've gone to church my own life, whole life and yet this. And they come and you see this weak church who has mentally assented to the truths of God, who have been taught to go after the fruits that are promised apart from the root, apart from losing themselves to the point of Christ alone living in them. The spirit leading and guiding every day. There is no such thing as too spiritual. Now, if you're being spiritual to feed your carnal nature, then yes. And there, that does exist. People, you know, do uh, this puffed up prophecy and prayer and things. And, and really, if they stop long enough with the Holy Spirit, their motives may be off. But I wasn't supposed to go there yet. Um... We always start every 21 day class with this. If you identify as a Italian, who out there is Italian? We have some Italian friends. I remember I used to tell Josh, I was like, I want my family to be like that. They're so loving. Their door was always open. They make pasta together. They took pride in their Italian heritage. Um, They were loud and funny and uh, loud, but the most loving group of people. And then there was um, Josh's family. They're, They're Norwegian. So they're the polar opposite. Uh, If you're drawing your identity from regions, they are quiet and salt is spicy. And um, good entertainment is talking about the weather. But in that, Josh drew, even as a Christian, a lot of his identity from that. So I'm quiet. I am uh, not um, uh, boisterous. I am not influential. I'm not a leader. I'm a background guy. That's what Norwegians are. And so he, he filtered the new creation that he was made through his heritage filter. And the Lord one day was talking to both of us and he said, you know, you received me. You received all of me. You've read the scripture that says you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, which is a, cre- a, a creature or um, 
a species that the earth has never known and yet you're filtering it through your Norwegian heritage. I was filtering mine through my German Irish heritage Jew. Um, we were filtering it through the natural. So yes, I'm a new creation. However, uh, I am energetic and I'm the outgoing one and he's the quiet, right? So all of a sudden we took all of heaven. <laughs> it's just, it sounds so silly when you say it out loud. We take all of heaven and the promises of Jesus and the new created spirit and the Holy Spirit that's been placed in us. And then we're like, but I'm going to filter it through my heritage personality or what I've learned from my family or my parents or my environment or words that were spoken over me or worldly definitions of who I am. It's just, <laughs> it sounds so silly when we say it out loud. Like, I mean, we see Moses do it. We see Abraham do it a little. We see Peter <laughs> You know, we see him even passing judgment on who Christ chooses to go talk to because all all of these perceptions are developed from a, a worldly standpoint. Uh, so it drove the church nuts that Jesus ate with sinners or uh, those that maybe were poorer in monetary earthly value or those that worked hard for a living like fishermen. And so, you know, the Lord shows us it all throughout his word. And yet we still find ourselves running his new creation truth through our human natural filter. It says the traditions of man are what caused the word of God to be of no effect. And so you have people living a saved, listen, saved, Christ did the work for salvation, and then there's heavenly rewards. But in salvation, when we work it out, he's provided so many things in addition to the promise of eternal life with Christ Jesus that we have access to if we'll lose ourselves completely, lay it down, and really make Christ our new identity, that you have a lot of Christians who are saved but are blaming God for monetary issues, family issues, health issues, all sorts of things because they have taken their new creation identity and then filtered it through natural means or words spoken over them or worldly definitions or what we refer to compara sin, which is only fleshly response to what we think we see. And it keeps people in bondage who have access literally to all of heaven that are part of a body whose head is Christ Jesus himself. The same spirit that raised him from the dead came to live in you and me. And yet we find ourselves filtering the power of heaven through natural means. And then we teach our kids to do it. And then our kids' kids learn to do it and we aim to stop that in every bit of influence that the Lord would give us that we do not have but as Christ alone we want people to know that you cannot continue just as a saved person it is time to work out your salvation and he's put everything inside of you so that you can no more excuses, no more pity parties, no more opinions based off of worldly definitions, uh, thoughts and thinking, words that were spoken over you as a child that you've allowed to define yourself even though all of heaven has come to live in you and the minute you are saved, you were seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. There is no excuse for any of us. And I'm not saying there aren't areas where the Holy Spirit, I've not allowed him to make and bring life in that area that I may live it out. But I will not give up because I know where the answer is and it's in him. I will not lose my joy because I know it's already there and I'm just going to release it one of these days. I will not lose the ability for the Spirit to live through me because it's his fruit that will change the world, not fake fruit from the flesh, 
I don't need to try to be kind and then be like, oh, look at my fruit, generous or whatever. No, the Holy Spirit will lead me there unapologetically. That's why I can say it's him alone. I live by him alone. The, by, my kids can know that. We don't have to live like the world. We don't have to make decisions like the world. God forbid that we would, and we have access to all of heaven, just like the feeding of the 4,000. That is not what I planned on talking about at all today. So if you're interested in Reboot, if you're tired of churchianity, don't stop going to church. So many people just jump off the boat and think that's what we're saying. That's not at all. Uh, just we feel the church is not, the church body has not been equipped to seek after between Sundays who they really are, that they can live out and work out their salvation outside of Sunday service. We've almost made Sunday service into an idol. The gathering of believers is crucial, but that is not the start and end of our relationship, our new creation existence in him. And we got to stop it. So Reboot helps reset that. Release new thinking, new living. Opens up the word to be life. And it does it back to back. So our online one is an hour a day um, for 21 days. But only Monday through Friday. And we do it back to back because um, we see change. And we're able to online. Now, our live ones where we do them in a church, uh, when churches have us in, we'll do two a day, like a conference. Or locally, we do it once a week. And it comes with homework assignments and follow-up videos and everything you need to ignite this new life and not leave it behind after or on day 22, if you will. So reboot rootbible.com, check it out. You can find where it's happening locally around you, or you can do the online one. But I tell you what, it is time to live in your new creation life. And it's time to stop finding excuses outside of it or believing the lies of the enemy that lead you to lukewarmness and you think that you're burning hot because the enemy is shrewd. But really, you're lukewarm and you're living a normal life with the promise of eternity. I don't want to do it. I don't want to live a normal life. And I want to help as many people as I can not do it either who have access to Christ Jesus. The old is gone. The earthly solution will never produce heaven's results. Jesus demonstrates it over and over again. Earthly solutions will never produce heaven's results. And either will our five senses. And either will our mind apart from being led and renewed by the spirit of God through the word of God. He's faithful and he's powerful. But he set up a system to literally put all of heaven in us. You know, <laughs> the irony is, of course the enemy, the enemy's number one foe is not you. It is Jesus who is in you. And you've got to remember that what he got cast out of heaven for desiring, God gave to us freely. All the authority all power here on earth literally gave it to us freely the spirit his same spirit oh, in us what satan got kicked out of heaven for we have access to as a free gift and then we find ourselves filtering it through the ways of the world or worldly thoughts or dead thinking, anything we identified with pre-salvation? Doesn't it sound insane when I say it out loud? Father, help us. Help us reach people with the power of your gospel 
that good news that brings about peace with you and then your spirit indwelling in us, leading us and guiding us in all things, revealing to us things we don't yet know that is impossible to access by our minds alone and in the natural means. Won't you help us do it? He's so good. So over the next few um, of these that we're going to do, I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll comment. I hope you'll share. But we're going to be going over what new creation living really looks like according to the word. Not my opinion. Not Josh's opinion. Not a ministry's opinion. What the word says is available to us. The whole reason Paul wrote to the church of Galatia and said, who has bewitched you? That what was begun in the spirit, you would now try to finish in the flesh. What are you thinking? Do you not know that he's given you everything? Everything. But the stresses of the day, perhaps you've taken on in his name that don't belong there the spirit never led you into the thoughts that don't belong to you and you're not taking captive of them to honor what the Lord himself has done for you for the Holy Spirit that lives in you that we get to be partakers of a divine nature but that means losing our identity with our self nature our flesh nature our soul nature you know, when we encourage our kids, we encourage them in who God has called them to be and the giftings he's put in them, not in their fleshly abilities. Paul calls that dung when he's defending himself because the church is looking for super apostles and comparing him to them. He calls it dung. All right. I have a whole lot of notes I didn't get to, but I hope you will, you, you'll take what has been said into consideration by the Spirit, not here, by the Spirit. Let Him lead you into all truths. By what is spoken, receive it by your Spirit who confirms the word of God in you, dividing soul and spirit, bone and marrow. He is the one that can teach you. You are not your own, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. Why is that encouraging to me? Because not only are you not your own, but you're not alone. Because you're not your own. 2 Corinthians 5.17, you can look that up. Galatians 2.20, these aren't just scriptures to hang on your wall or, which isn't bad, I have scripture on my wall, <laughs> or quote in a puffed up fleshly manner. When Galatians 2.20 says, I no longer live, Paul is saying it here, but Christ lives in me. He's demonstrating for us what all of our lives can look like because of his death, burial, resurrection, and the receiving of the Holy Spirit, the baptism by water and then fire, what is available to us that we no longer have to find identity in our fleshly nature or our own abilities, but we can find it completely and wholly and powerfully in Christ alone because we are dead. And it's no longer us that lives, but Christ that lives in us. But do you want to live that life? Or is there too much of the world that we love that we're holding on to and filtering his word through so that we can partake of the world as it is, who the prince of the air is over, who before you received salvation was your father, the father of lies. He's still the prince of the air. Why would you want to participate in anything the prince of the air does? Why would you want to filter it through anything that used to be fathered by the prince of the air, your old nature, your what now is dead self? 
your fleshly nature, your soulical nature, the body, the Bible refers to it as, why would you filter any of your new creation promises, the word of God or the Holy Spirit leading through what once was fathered by the prince of the air? It's not worth it. It's a new way of thinking. It comes from the word, led by the spirit. Hope you all know we love you and that's why we're out here doing it. Or nobody, he's everything. Root of revival, rooted in his word, ignited by his spirit. Not rooted in my mind and seeking his spirit. That was probably a religious cow for some of y'all. Mm -mm. It's not how it goes. All right. You want life to come alive in you today. Second Peter chapter one, read it. Have your kids read it. Have your teens read it. And then have a discussion about it. This doesn't have to be sit around kumbaya Bible study. Listen, guys, today we're going to be discussing at dinner, Second Peter chapter 1. So in your Bible study, also read that, please. What? My kids would never. Why? Do they not have value for new creation living? Do they not know that they no longer live, but Christ lives in them? Do they not know that their family lives and moves and has their being by his spirit alone? What else would we do? Why be saved and then ignore it? Second Peter chapter one. Read it. And discuss it as a family. My eight-year-old can have a healthy discussion on Second Peter chapter one or any scripture. We were discussing Acts the other day. When they delivered, I think it was Acts 9, maybe 7. When they would deliver people from spirits, they would scream as they came out of them. So we talked about that. My kids have experienced that when we're praying for people or um, when we're in a ministry that's praying for people um, in a service. They need to know that's biblical. The enemy doesn't want to give up territory. The demon doesn't want to give up territory. So he screams on his way out. That's biblical. These are discussions we should be having with our kids. That's biblical and that's the life we get to live. Is freeing people from demonic oppression. Healing the sick. Because we're not filtering it through what the word says. Well, it's got to be done by supplements and medication alone. By frontline workers who know best. Oh, wait, I'm missing that in my word. No, it says he healed all that were sick. Freed them from oppression of the evil one. That same spirit lives in us. All right. I'm going to pick up tomorrow. Wait, what's tomorrow? Saturday. It might be Josh tomorrow. I'll pick up the next time I'm here. But I need you to know the old is gone, the new has come. And your family can have a Holy Spirit encounter tonight just by reading and discussing Second Peter chapter 1. And then praying in the spirit. Walk the floor. Set a timer. We're going to pray in the spirit for five minutes, guys. What? Yes. Because it's no longer who that lives. It's no longer us that lives. Why do we not want access to the spirit to lead us into truth? What's well, one way we get there? By praying in the spirit. Because he's going to pray things we don't yet know to pray even. Teach your kids to hear the voice of God. Teach your kids to pray in the spirit. And do it by modeling it before them, not just at church. And the enemy's not unique. The first time you pray together, literally it's like all of hell moves to make it feel the most awkward possible. <laughs> I don't know why it is. But when a family is trying to move together in the Lord, it's like awkward, 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 awkward the very first time. But if you break through, break through, it's not, the enemy does the same tactic. He's not creative breakthrough until it becomes normal living in your home to be led by the spirit to pray in the spirit on things you don't yet know to confess the word over things that don't look like heaven to acknowledge the holy spirit as our only guide to cherish the word of god as as the very thing that leads and guides us into all truth by the spirit who makes the word real to us not this not our mental ascension, not even how smart we are and what we can reason in the word. I love this thesaurus. I love it. When I can look up a Greek word or a Hebrew word and find further meaning. 
but honestly, it's the Holy Spirit that is continuing to make that word life here, that it can renew this to think through the Spirit, to think through the new created me, not, oh, look how smart I am and how renewed my mind is. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just sounds so silly when you say it. We can't do anything without him. Nothing, 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 nothing that will bring about supernatural results apart from him. We can operate like the rest of the world apart from him. But why? Why do we want to? Why do we want to raise families that way? No, 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 no. Okay. Love each and every one of you. I'm going to pray over you. I hope this blessed you. Second Peter chapter run, read it with your family. Talk about it at dinner time or at the couch or in the car. He's available. And the spirit, as you put your focus on heaven, the word, the spirit will become renewing, will be, begin renewing your mind. And then the fruit of the spirit will become natural in your life. Not fake fruit, the fruit of the spirit. And you can identify flesh if it's not there. And then you pray in the spirit and you get guidance so that his fruit can come out. Father, I thank you for this time together. I bind where the enemy would try to seal away this word, this seed that you've given. I bind the hand of the enemy and, and I loose all of heaven to protect and, and the word, the angels that you've given these people to protect this word around them. And that each and every ear that has heard it will cherish it. And Holy Spirit, you'll make it known as they cherish it, as they meditate on the truth that they no longer live, but Christ lives in them, that you will bring about the reality of that in their life. That the scales would fall off, that the old nature would be renewed because their focus is the word and Holy Spirit, you're guiding and leading alone. I thank you for the power that is changing families. Every single one that hears this message given by your word, taught by your spirit, that families are changed, that normal Christianity is supernatural and not natural. The heaven's results are produced in homes as they do. Natural solutions are no longer entertained, but heaven is sought out for its solutions alone. Found in the word, led by the spirit, revealed by the spirit in every home of every ear that is listening. I release the anointing promised in the word, a tangible presence of you, Holy Spirit, that you would dwell in us, that you would guide us, that you would live with us, and that you would even come upon us. All the ways you manifest yourself according to the Bible. We want to live that. And I pray that every ear of every home that's listening lives that also. I thank you, Lord, that your word is true. That every man that comes against your word, every word that would not be based in your word is a liar. Let those lies be exposed that we may take them captive and cast them out to the obedience of Christ Jesus, who is the word. Holy Spirit, help us. We want nothing more than to surrender completely to the new creation identity in us. That we may live heaven on earth. That we may honor our Father in all that we do. And bless the generations because we do. In Jesus' name. So glad you're here. Have a good day. Slay those religious cows. Go after the word. What does it really say? And we will see you again. God bless. Check out rootofrevival.com. You need this in your church. Check out Reboot dot rootbible.com if you want to get in one of these courses and really just hammer it out what's this really mean what's this new creation living join us and we'll see you 